What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Aiden here with Jenny Lee. Jenny Lee. And uh, we are here to make another pregnancy journey because it has been a journey. A journey. <laughs> so <laughs> we're not going to waste any time and we're going to keep you all updated with what's going on with us. So let's do it. tried another IUI and we were really hoping that we were pregnant this time and we found out that we're not and we've kind of been sitting with that again um, it just really is this like roller coaster of emotions that we go through and each time feels a little bit different um, but I think it's all for the greatest good for us in terms of learning like we're just learning so much in this process we're able to see a little bit more clearly you know just the energy that we brought to this process I think for for myself being with you know trans people like it's like you can't like I can't just accidentally get pregnant you know it's something that I I've kind of had the privilege of in a way and I feel like I, I feel like now that I'm finally ready to be pregnant, as soon as I start trying, it's like I'm, I feel like I'm entitled to get pregnant. And so I'm trying to look really clearly at that entitlement of what, that I'm holding, of like, okay, I'm ready. And since, it's, since we have all these extra steps as this couple that is one cisgender person and one transgender person, and we have to go to a clinic and we need, you know, sperm that we can't produce ourselves and we need, you know, all these extra steps and we need a savings and we need money in order to do this and we need all of these resources and help that you better bet your ass we need to get pregnant the first or second try or third yeah. try because this is expensive, this is taking a lot of energy and time and tears and so much from us. Yeah, the stress that's around the process we've been working on and trying to release, but there's like all these layers that keep showing up. And so we, this time, like I know for myself, like I'm looking really clearly at my, my feelings of entitlement to, to get pregnant sooner because, because we have it a little harder. And I'm trying to, to let go of that. I'm trying to recognize that it's normal for any couple of any kind to take time for this process to take place to really open to the right timing for this particular spirit that wants to be our baby and to, to give my body time, to give science time to really align itself with the spirit of the baby. And so patience is something that, that I'm trying really hard to, to open to in a new way. You know, you think you're patient and then you're like, again it's the, you know we try this three times like how long do we have to do this like you know like it just it triggers all of the potential like triggers it, it just triggers and hits upon all of the wounds that we're bringing to this process which is like we've waited years to do this because we didn't think we could afford it before we didn't think that we were ready we didn't think this or that and now we're finally ready so we want to just be met with open arms in this process. And it's not to say that we're gonna have to wait forever. I mean, it might happen next time. We're just, it, the process of trying to hold equal amounts of hope and equal amounts of possibility for it not to work or it not for not to be the time feels like it takes a whole lot of energy for us at this point. And so we're trying to just relax. Like the next, the next one that we are planning to do like we're just like, okay, we're just gonna be relaxed. We're gonna act like we could accidentally get pregnant. And we're just, you know, we'll have a glass of wine and just can relax, <laughs> not bring, okay, well, it could be this time. And we like, let's be on time and let's make sure that the, the clinic has us on time and let's make sure that this and this and this and all of the details. So I just feel like for myself, like ne this next time, it is my intention to relax deeper and not care about the details. And, and if for whatever reason, the details don't line up according to what I think in my head it needs to be, I'm just, I'm gonna try to just relax and be like, okay, like this, we're just trusting. We're just, we're just trusting. Yeah, I mean like, it does feel a little easier. And when I say easier, I really just mean like, it doesn't hurt as much. And I think it's just because, you know, you, you just, you have your expectations so high, you know? 
and each time it's kind of like a hit in the gut and a hit in the gut and to the point where you kind of like build up your your own like you know you get hit in the gut and you're like oh it didn't hurt that much i've been hitting the gut harder than that you know to what Jane Lee was saying earlier just to give a little more explanation is i think that you know our biggest thing is that we had we had this for lack of a better word this privilege of not having to worry about getting pregnant for our whole relationship it did it, the contraceptions yeah. were not an issue you know anything like that it wasn't an issue yeah i've never and, been on birth control yeah. you know and so now our privilege isn't really a privilege anymore. Now the, the the coin has flipped, the table has turned because now our inability to just get pregnant by accident, not that it's hindering our ability to get pregnant now, but it's like we can't just have an ovulation test and try the day before she thinks she's gonna spike and then try the day she does spike and then try again every single day after that yeah, just to just see if like, it happens. Yeah, we can't just read the strip and be like, all right, we're just Let's gonna go it. at it. We're just gonna yeah. be rabbits for the next few yes. days and and we'll just we'll get pregnant and it'll happen yeah you know um i feel like for us you know i use the analogy this last time with us in our situation it's like you're shooting a basketball in the dark and they turn the lights on so you can see the ball and you can see the basket and you can see how far you are but then they turn the lights off for when you actually shoot so you get to see it then they turn the lights off and you've got to shoot in the dark and i feel like the big difference between being a trans person with a cis person or two trans people or just not being not having you know that those things right it's like we get one basketball to shoot each month as opposed to a cisgender couple that might have five basketballs to shoot in each month. We get one shot within the dark to, with our eyes closed, to shoot the basket. Other people, right, they just get more opportunities. And so it it's hard not to feel like not a woe is me but like uh well this is so much harder and, and we're putting so much more effort in so because we put effort in we should be getting the results and that's where i think the the self the entitlement of like you know well like what well, well other people don't even try and they get pregnant and we're trying so we should definitely be getting pregnant so we're trying to release that because mm -hmm. we know it's not good it's not pressure it's too much pressure on us too much pressure on the baby it's just not how it works like mm -hmm. it does take time and there are cisgender couples that take a lot of time to get pregnant as well mm -hmm. and so and i'm trying to release my anger around them too you know every time a cisgender couple tells us their story about how long it's taken them to get pregnant i typically i'm like you do not even know like what you know like how yeah. how could you be complaining right now to me yeah. because i can't biggest... just go in the other room and have sex with my husband and get yeah. pregnant so you have no space to speak but that's not fair either yeah. because everyone has their own struggle this is mm -hmm. a vulnerable process for, for everyone involved yes. and the other part about the basketball yeah. that you were saying it's not only that like we're given a basketball and we get to shoot one basketball we have to reach really deep into our pockets and pull out our savings yeah, to, buy the, to buy the basketball <laughs> and then be like okay this is a lot of my savings right here <laughs> like yeah. you yeah. know and it's just it's hard not yeah. to have pressure it's hard yeah. not to feel yeah and and that doesn't correlate to us being in a good space to bring in the energy of the baby and so we're just trying to release that and the energy of we're abundance just, and yes. trusting that we're, we're provided for that the baby is going to be provided for as well i mean at the end of the day we you know just being transparent with y'all like we don't have some big deep savings you know for, what this, I mean? for yeah. this no we had a little bit saved and honestly it's already diminishing financially we're in a much better place than we were a year or even two years ago um i mean we used to like we don't need to go into details but like the point is is that finances even aside like just the work we put in to just believe in the abundance that we don't need all the money in the world to have a beautiful child and have a beautiful family so you know it it's a lot to unpack in one thing and we're just trying to do our best to really you know go through every package in our luggage and unpack everything and really try to put it where it belongs and not just shove it in the closet and say that we've dealt with it and so we're 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 trying to be transparent with y'all and let you guys know you know where we're at and it did not happen again um so just going to stay positive mm -hmm. 
All right, so thanks for tuning into this episode. We are going to keep them flowing, and uh, you know, we are trying again, so fingers crossed. Yes. All right, thanks y'all for the love, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Come on.